Oklahoma, missing persons, and statistics. Oklahoma, situated in the south-central region of the United States, shares borders with Texas to the south and west, Kansas to the north, Missouri to the northeast, Arkansas to the east, New Mexico to the west, and Colorado to the northwest. Positioned partially in the western extreme of the upland south, it ranks as the 20th largest state and the 28th most populous among the 50 United States. Its inhabitants are recognized as Oklahomans, and the capital, as well as the largest city, is Oklahoma City. The state's name originates from the Choctaw words Okla, meaning, people, and Hama, translating to, red. Additionally, Oklahoma is colloquially referred to as, the Sooner State, a nod to the Sooners, settlers who claimed land in the unassigned lands before the Indian Appropriations Act of 1889 sanctioned the land rush of 1889. The region now identified as Oklahoma has been inhabited since at least the last Ice Age. Between approximately 800 and 1500, the Southern Plains villagers and the Mississippian people occupied the area. The Southern Plains panhandle culture flourished in the western part of Oklahoma, specifically in the Oklahoma panhandle, while the Caddo and Mississippian culture thrived in the eastern regions, including the prominent settlement of Spiro Mounds. The Wichita people, Tonkawa people, and Caddo people also inhabited the area, alongside the migration of the Plains Apache into the Southern Great Plains, now western Oklahoma between 1300 and 1500. In the 1700s, the Comanche people, Kiowa people, Osage people, and Quapa people further migrated into the region. Oklahoma Amber Alert Oklahoma Amber Alert Details Missing Child Emergency Response by State The Amber Alert stands as a crucial program designed to respond swiftly when children are abducted by predators utilizing the collaboration between law enforcement and media to alert the public. Activation criteria remain consistent, regardless of whether it's a local, regional, or statewide initiative. Law enforcement triggers an AMBER alert by notifying broadcast media with relevant case information when the following criteria are met. The missing child falls within a predetermined age range. The law enforcement agency has reason to believe the child has been kidnapped. The agency believes the missing child is under the threat of serious bodily harm or death. Upon receipt of an AMBER alert, radio and television stations interrupt their regular programming to notify the public about the abducted child. Given that 95% of people driving in their cars listen to the radio, this method proves highly effective in disseminating descriptions of the child, the kidnapper, vehicles, or accomplices. The advantages of the AMBER alert system include. It is a cost-free initiative. It fosters collaboration between typically opposing entities, law enforcement and media, leveraging their inherent strengths. It encourages accountability by establishing a comprehensive missing child protocol. It provides a timely response to kidnappers who can quickly vanish with children. It conveys a powerful message to potential kidnappers about a community's commitment to safeguarding children. Ultimately, it saves lives. The origin of the Amber Alert traces back to citizen concerns following the tragic 1996 kidnapping and murder of nine-year-old Amber Hagerman in Arlington, Texas. Since its inception, the concept has garnered widespread support from various segments of society. Examples of proactive individuals who have implemented variations on the Amber Alert include Mrs. Robin Trumbull, who established the statewide Michigan Amber Alert after learning about it at a Kloss Kids Foundation-sponsored town hall meeting. Chris and Terry Conrad, who initiated the localized Corcoran, California Tracy alert in memory of their kidnapped daughter Tracy. Colleen Nick, 
who inspired the Arkansas statewide Morgan Nick alert in memory of her kidnapped daughter. Officer John Goad of the North Carolina Center for Missing Persons, who began the regional NC can alert system out of a sense of duty. In recognizing the slow progress in recovering kidnapped children, it is crucial to wholeheartedly support and promote innovative ideas like the Amber Alert. Reflecting on past incidents, such as the kidnapping of Polly in 1993, underscores the potential life-saving impact of rapid response initiatives. To stay current, law enforcement agencies, broadcast media, and the public are encouraged to provide updated information for inclusion in ongoing analyses of the Amber Alert's effectiveness. The collective goal remains the protection of every child through one of the most ingenious ideas in the battle to recover abducted children. Francine Frost Francine Frost, born on January 28, 1937, and last seen around February 16, 1981, vanished following a shopping excursion in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Despite the discovery of her remains two years later, her identity remained unknown until August 2016, when she was positively identified. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance and subsequent discovery led to the classification of her death as a homicide. Case details. On the evening of February 16, 1981, Frost disappeared after a routine grocery shopping trip. The following morning, her abandoned car was located in the Skaggs Alpha Beta parking lot, its keys left hanging on the car door, prompting suspicions of foul play. Concerned for her well-being, her family promptly filed a missing person report, estimating her disappearance to have occurred between 8.30 p.m. and 4 a.m. Partial remains of an unidentified woman, estimated to be between 25 and 40 years old, along with clothing, were found near Martin, Oklahoma, in January 1983. The autopsy report for these remains was brought to light by an Oklahoma medical examiner during an office relocation, and the information was subsequently entered into NAMIS. Identification process. In December 2014, Frost's grandson came across Carl Koppelman's forum on web sleuths, establishing a connection between his grandmother and the unidentified remains. Following this revelation, the body was exhumed in 2015. Through a meticulous process involving DNA and dental records, the remains were conclusively identified as those of Francine Frost. Legal proposal. In honor of Francine Frost and in response to the challenges faced in her case, the Frost family has put forward a legislative proposal known as Francine's Law. This proposed law seeks to mandate law enforcement agencies in the state of Oklahoma to enter all information regarding missing persons and unidentified remains into databases within 30 days of their last contact or discovery. The aim is to streamline and expedite the identification process, ensuring a more effective and timely response in cases similar to Francine Frost's. The Oklahoma Missing Person Clearinghouse offers support to law enforcement agencies and families in their quest to locate missing persons, providing available resources for assistance. Operating within the Crimes Information Unit of the OSBI's Investigative Services Division, the Clearinghouse serves as the state liaison to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NCMEC. In a significant development in November 2019, the Oklahoma legislature enacted Francine's Law, which redefined the parameters of a missing person and mandated the prompt entry of such individuals into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, NAMIS, within 30 days. For detailed information regarding Francine Frost and Francine's Law, please refer to the dedicated, Francine's Law, section. For inquiries, assistance, or to provide feedback on the Missing Persons Program, individuals can contact the Oklahoma Missing Persons Coordinator at 800-522-8017 or via email at ochmissing at ospi.oc.gov. Another bill is headed to the governor's desk designed to help families and law enforcement solve missing and unidentified persons cases. News Times' Chris Gilmore is at the state capitol live this morning. He's been investigating Francine's law and he has the details. Chris. Good morning, Lacey Robin. That bill was named after a Tulsa girl, Francine Frost, who was reported missing back in 1981. Uh, more than three and a half decades later after her disappearance, thanks to science and new laws, the remains uh, were discovered two years after she was abducted or identified as hers. Francine's family was there when the Senate unanimously approved the measure. They say Francine's law can help solve cases like hers much quicker. The bill would require law enforcement, medical examiners, and Orders to enter all missing and unidentified persons information into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, which provides free forensic services, including forensic odontology, forensic examination, forensic anthropology, and DNA analysis.
it's an overwhelming feeling. We are extremely grateful and appreciative to the Oklahoma State Legislature, to Representative Rhonda Baker, Senator Daniels, all the co-authors of this bill, that they have understood and seen the importance to missing persons' family, the impact this bill will have. Lawmakers approved Francine's law during National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Again, that bill is now headed, headed to uh, Kevin Stitt's desk to be signed uh, and awaiting approval. We'll have more on that as this story develops. Reporting live from the Capitol, Chris Gilmore, Oklahoma Zone News Now. Oklahoma Silver Alert. Oklahoma Silver Alert. 2014 Oklahoma Statutes. Title 63. Public Health and Safety. Initiating Silver Alert Protocol, Process. Universal Citation. 63 OK Stat Section 63-1-1990.5, 2014. A. The activation of a silver alert is warranted when a local law enforcement agency is informed of the disappearance of a senior citizen. Confirms that, at the time of the report. A. The individual in question is aged 60, 60, years or older. B. The whereabouts of the senior citizen are unknown, or c. The senior citizen is afflicted with dementia or another cognitive impairment. Oklahoma Statistics of Missing Persons Unraveling the Enigma The State of Missing Persons in Oklahoma Oklahoma, like many states, grapples with the intricate and heart-wrenching issue of missing persons. The statistics present a mosaic of challenges, with hundreds of open cases, yet a glimmer of resolution with the closure of others. This essay delves into the current landscape of missing persons in Oklahoma, shedding light on the complexity of these cases and the collective effort needed to address them. 1. The alarming numbers. A. Missing persons. Open cases. 706. 1. The sheer volume of open missing persons cases in Oklahoma reflects the magnitude of the issue. 2. Families living in limbo, communities affected, and law enforcement navigating the challenges of unresolved cases. B. Resolved cases, 2,156. 1. Acknowledging the dedication of law enforcement and the solace brought to families when cases are resolved. 2. Analyzing patterns and successes to improve future investigations. 2. Unidentified persons. A. Open cases, 112. 1. The existence of unidentified persons adds another layer of complexity to the missing persons challenge. 2. The need for advanced forensic technologies and cross-agency collaboration to identify and bring closure to these cases. b. Resolved cases, 172. 1. Celebrating successes in identifying unknown individuals. 2. Understanding the significance of closure for families in the justice system. 3. Unclaimed persons. a. Open cases, 135. 1. Unclaimed persons introduce an additional dimension to the challenges surrounding missing individuals. 2. Analyzing the reasons behind unclaimed status and developing strategies to address this phenomenon. b. Resolved cases, 83. 1. The closure of unclaimed persons' cases highlights successful efforts to reconnect families. 2. Examining the factors contributing to unclaimed status and identifying preventive measures. 3. Unclaimed persons. A. Open cases. 135. 1. Unclaimed persons introduce an additional dimension to the challenges surrounding missing individuals. 2. Analyzing the reasons behind unclaimed status and developing strategies to address this phenomenon. B. Resolved cases. 83. 1. The closure of unclaimed persons' cases highlights successful efforts to reconnect families. 2. Examining the factors contributing to unclaimed status and identifying preventive measures. 4. The human impact. A. Families and communities. 1. Examining the emotional toll on families of missing persons. 2. The importance of community support networks for those affected. B. Law enforcement. 1. Recognizing the tireless efforts of law enforcement in addressing missing persons cases. 2. The need for continued resources, training, and collaboration for enhanced efficiency. 5. Moving forward. A. Enhanced technology and collaboration. 1. Investing in advanced forensic technologies to aid in identifying unidentified persons. 2. Encouraging cross-agency collaboration to share information and resources. B. Public awareness and involvement. 1. Fostering awareness and community involvement in missing persons cases. 2. 
establishing support networks and resources for affected families. C. Legislative support. 1. Advocating for legislation that supports efficient reporting and resolution of missing persons cases. 2. Addressing gaps in existing protocols and proposing measures for improvement. The challenge of missing persons in Oklahoma is multifaceted, with open cases, resolved cases, and the poignant issue of unidentified and unclaimed individuals. Resolving these cases requires a concerted effort, combining advanced technology, community engagement, and legislative support. By addressing these aspects, Oklahoma can strive towards reducing the number of open cases, providing closure to families, and enhancing the overall effectiveness of missing persons investigations. The human impact of these cases necessitates a collective commitment to ensuring the well-being and safety of every individual in the state.